There is a question as old as time itself, something that man has been asking from the very beginning. What is comedy? Why does that make me laugh? Is it important? Is it the very stuff of life itself? Or is it just a defiant toot on the whoopee cushion of existence? Freud said there was no such thing as a joke. But then, how many funny Austrian analysts do you know? There are those who say that the essence of comedy is intangible, that only a fool would seek a definition. Good morning, Zucker Brothers. No, I'm sorry, he's not available right now. Can I take a message? For about the last 20 years, my partner Jim Abrams and my brother Jerry have had Ten rules that we followed in comedy, just so we can make our best guess uh, before we actually try the movie out in front of test audiences. So uh, we figured out these ten rules that just serve as kind of a, a guideline for us, so, so we can figure out what will be funny in advance. And uh, the first rule is uh, joke on a joke. Never do a joke on top of another joke. Basically, you can only do one joke at a time. All right, Steve, let's face a few facts. If a character in the foreground is serious, then you can then do a funny joke or something crazy happening in the background, and vice versa. Aim a touchdown a third of the way along. Slight crosswind from the right, so be ready for it. Land too fast, use your emergency brakes. Red handles right in front of you. If that doesn't stop you. If that doesn't stop you, cut the four ignition switches over the co-pilot's head. If there's something going on in the background that's funny, like something crashing down or whatever, I can't think of anything right now, but Leslie will be totally serious. I'm Leslie Nielsen, by the way. And most of the funny things that he says are delivered straight, straight face. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. We always say, don't play it straight, play it deadly serious. Nice beaver. Thank you. I just had it stuffed. Let me help you with that. <sighs> now, on with the program. My absence of flashy camera style is part of the rule number one, actually, which is joke on a joke. It's, uh, it, in comedy, it's, I, I believe that it's just, it's best to just record the action. I mean, the characters are either being funny or the background is funny. It's, it's really not, not the time for me to show off my, you know, my UCLA film school uh, term paper or whatever. Although I, did, I didn't go to UCLA. But I, I couldn't get to UCLA. We, I actually attended the, the University of Wisconsin film school. It had two World War II cameras and, uh, <laughs> and no editing facilities, but brilliant, brilliant theory. Never look over your shoulder. You don't want to know what's going on behind you. We do a lot of things that happen in the background because if you did it in the foreground, it's, it's, it's not subtle enough. So some things just have to be put in the background so that ostensibly you give the audience credit, in other words, for, for seeing it. It's not like we're not putting it right up in front of you. Ed, is it just my imagination or is the whole world crazy? No, it's just a small percentage of the population, Frank. I hope you're right. It's just that I don't know if I fit anymore. Leslie never looked at the, at the waiter, so he, he didn't acknowledge the background. However, George Kennedy did. I can't really tell you why that worked. I mean, you, but Leslie really can't acknowledge stuff, and, and most characters can't if you do a good background joke. Let me tell you something, Steve. Ted Spiker was a top-notch squadron leader. A long time ago. Neither of them acknowledged what was happening. Which usually makes for a, a successful joke, but audiences didn't, uh, didn't laugh because it was unrelated. So it was all in all, it was a dis disappointment, but nothing like the crash test of the Skoda. Know when to back off. Be careful of piling it on. Stay away from groups. Piling on is, is when a particular 
potential satirical target has just had enough and uh, any more is just simply piling on. The guy's already down. I mean, in the, uh, in the 70s, it was Nixon jokes. In the, uh, I guess, the late 80s and, and 90s, it's quail jokes. And, uh, or I guess a reference to Jeffrey Archer in any decade. If it's going to be for real, make it quick. Surreal. Oh, surreal? Yeah. Oh. If it's going to be surreal, <laughs> make it quick. <laughs> uh, that didn't happen is, is a rule that uh, I always think of uh, in airplane when uh, one of the air controllers says, particularly miles, of course. That's impossible. They're on instruments. It's just a total fantasy, but if it's on the screen uh, short enough, we, we can get away with it. Respect the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's usually not good to remind an audience that they're watching a movie. In other words, when, when, you, when you break the fourth wall and suddenly a character is talking right into camera. It takes so many things to make love last. Most of all, it takes respect. And I can't live with the man I don't respect. What a pisser. Even though we kind of remind audiences that they're watching a movie, we get away with it. If it's short enough, which relates to the previous rule. The suspension of disbelief is, is very important, much as it was during the Reagan administration. <laughs> There's a joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, William Wyler once said something to me that I have never forgotten. It's a tremendous risk to put yourself out there, because if it's not funny, everybody knows. It's not like drama where you can fool people and think, oh, this was, uh, this was great. This is, you know, re reminiscent of a young Boonwell in his blue period or something. But, but you can, <laughs> in comedy, it's either, there's two speeds, on and off. It's, there's no in between. Don't get too worthy. Never grind your act. Or scratch yourself in public. <laughs> Axe grinding is when you make a, uh, you overdo a political point. I think you can get away with it when it's done in a satirical vein, as long as you pay for it with jokes. And I, I think that we try to do that in Naked Gun Two and a Half with the environmental message. I want to be known as the environmental police lieutenant. I want a world where Frank Jr. All the Frank Juniors can sit under a shade tree, breathe the air, swim in the ocean, and go into a 7-Eleven without an interpreter. There are no rules. The last and final rule of comedy is there are no rules, which is another way of saying that you, know, you can't take these, the academic rules part of it too seriously because we, we regularly break all of the rules. Joey. You like movies about gladiators? It can be broken, and I'm not saying you have to follow them, but just, I wouldn't try these at home.